Thank you, John. I um, I was born and raised in Berkeley, California. Uh, lived there all the way up until I graduated from from college. As I was growing up, I, I had an interest in in boxing because of the great Muhammad Ali. He used to be on Wide World of Sports, and I used to try to catch whenever he fought. Um, the, the thing that attracted it to me is the fact that he was able to talk and predict a knockout and make the prediction come true. So that's how I initially got started and got interested in the sport of boxing. But while I was uh, growing up in the Bay Area, I was into sports. Um, believe it or not, I played tennis when I was in high school, varsity, for three years. And uh, then when I went to college, I got interested in running track because of my twin brother. He had ran track in high school. So I kind of jumped on board and really didn't know how fast I was at the time, but was able to, um, uh, in what they used to say, put them up and put them down pretty fast. And uh, me and my brother... Uh, uh, set a few records while we were at Cal State University of Hayward. Um, I got the opportunity to come to Las Vegas because they were hurting for African-American teachers. Uh, my assistant track coach happened to know the recruiter, and uh, he asked me one day as I was in the phys ed complex, would I be willing to go to Las Vegas and teach school? Well, at the time, I didn't have anything going on, so I said, yeah, I'll go. And, you know, went to a couple of seminars, filled out the paperwork, and when I graduated from Cal State Hayward, I uh, ended up going to Las Vegas. Now, the amazing thing for me, once I got to Las Vegas, is within that next year, Muhammad Ali happened to come to Las Vegas and he was fighting a guy by the name of Joe Bugner. And I was excited because I'd only watched Ali on television. So I went to the fight with my cousin, could not afford it, we were standing out in front of the convention center, just soaking up the atmosphere, when a very close friend of mine uh, happened to come to Las Vegas for the fight. And when I saw him, I was shocked to see him. He was shocked to see me. So he asked me, what are you doing here, Kenny? And I said, well, I live here now. And then his next question was, do you have a ticket? And that was magical to me. And I said, no, I don't. And he pulled out a ticket for me and my cousin. And 15 minutes later, we were in the arena. Uh, our, my heart pumping, the adrenaline flowing, and witnessed my first Muhammad Ali fight. While I was sitting there in the arena, all pumped up, at that point in time, I knew I wanted to get involved with the sport of boxing. I didn't know what at the time, but I knew I wanted to be involved in the sport. And at that time, I um, decided to first get involved as a judge. Now, um, there was a teacher friend of mine that knew a guy that used to work for the Athletic Commission. His name was Johnny Lehman. Johnny Lehman worked for the Athletic Commission and also worked for the promoters. 
And me and my twin brother, Kermit, started working with him as an assistant just so that we can get a credential to get into the fights. And Johnny was, uh, was a bit up there in age, and he didn't mind it because we were able to do a lot of the footwork that he didn't have to worry about. Um, like going to the dressing rooms, giving the fighters their spit buckets and, 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 their, and their gloves, the gloves that they were going to be wearing that night for the fight. And, um, and at the end of the fight, we would climb in the ring and get the gloves off the fighters. So it was something for us to do that, that we was excited to do. And many times Johnny Lehman would want to, you know, kick us down a few bucks. And we didn't care about the bucks. We was just excited to get into the fight and just be a part of it. At that point in time, I decided about wanting to be a judge. I'd gotten to, to know a few of the, the judges at ringside. Um, so uh, my attitude was, hey, try to be a judge. So the next thing I did was to seek out how to get involved into the amateur program. After I seeked that information out and started going to the amateur program, my twin brother Kermit started going to the amateur programs as well. So we both were going to the amateur program, learning how to be a judge. And I had been judging for maybe three or four years. And, and basically what I would do was score the fight uh, as an amateur. And then when I went to the professional fights, I would score the fight and I would compare my score with one of the professional judges. And then one of the, uh, the professional judges looked at me and he says, he says, Kenny, you're in pretty good shape. Why don't you, why don't you try being a, a referee? And my first thought was, no, I don't want to get in there. I don't, want to, I don't want a referee. And then I thought about it and I said to myself, well, why not give it a try? So the very first person I asked about being a referee um, or training me to be a referee was Richard Green. Richard Green had just refereed the Boom Boom Mancini Dooku Kim fight. And for those that remember, it was, it was at Caesars Palace. It was during the summer months. It, the temperature was hot. Um, it was a great fight. Uh, after the fight, Dooku Kim passed. He took too many punches, uh, with experience of cerebral hematoma, and, and, and passed. And, um, and um, me and my brother happened to be in the ring after the fight collecting the gloves. My brother collected the gloves from Dooku Kim, I collected the gloves from uh, Boom Boom Mancini. And, uh, but anyway, Richard Green refereed the fight. I asked him would he train me. He agreed, but it was just a few months later he had passed away. Then I focused and I asked uh, Richard Steele if he would uh, train me to be a, a referee. Richard agreed. Richard took me to... Hal Miller's gym, which is over off of Washington, got me in the ring, uh, uh, started teaching me the art of refereeing. Um, it, it really kind of worked out in my favor in reference to where I was teaching school because um, I was just engulfed with wanting to become a referee. And during my lunchtime, um, my lunch break and my preparation break were back to back so I had an hour and a half time uh, for lunch and what I would do was at my lunch time I'd drive up to top rank I would get in the gym when there were fighters sparring and I'd get four, five, six rounds of uh, just practical experience and go back to work and finish my work day so I was getting the advantage 
of getting in the ring as an amateur referee as well as getting in the ring with professionals. Uh, some of those professionals were um, Trevor Burbick. Um, there were a lot of fighters that I was able to back then get in the ring with. So anyway, I had the best of both worlds. And I had the best of both worlds because when Johnny Lehman was ready to retire as an inspector, he put my name in with the Athletic Commission to take his spot. And the Athletic Commission um, did so. Um, so now I really had it good because now I'm able uh, to go into the dressing rooms, listen to Richard Steele, Mills Lane, Carlos Padilla, um, uh, Joey Curtis, um, you know, uh, Toby Gibson, uh, see these guys in the ring, behind the scenes, and I was able to learn. And that was the key thing for me. I was able to learn. And um, I, I, I stayed and worked with my trade until I was finally appointed in 1991. And, um, and, and I'll admit it wasn't easy. There was, there was some struggles for me. But um, I, I was able to overcome them with the, with, with the grace of the Lord. And um, I got put on and, um, you know, now the, the, the transition for me was as an amateur referee, I was the top amateur referee in the state of Nevada. Now starting out as a professional referee, it's like I'm starting all over again because I'm like the low man on the totem pole. So anyway, um, I, 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 I stuck with it because like I said, I was around some, I felt some of the uh, best referees uh, on the planet. Um, um, uh, after I got appointed, later came Joe Cortez which I felt was one of the top referees in the country. Well, with working with those guys and studying the, the art of refereeing um, was a, a real good position for me to be in here uh, in Las Vegas, Nevada. So anyway, I just stuck with it. Um, again, there were some hard times for me because um, at the pace that I wanted to move at was not the pace that... that the, the commission was moving me at. So there were times I was very frustrated. But um, um, the, the bottom line was that I just had to hang in there. Um, there were times I was thinking of, 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 of either quitting as a referee and, and wanting to go back as an inspector or just quitting entirely because um, I wasn't getting the big marquee fights. Um, in, the, in the 90s, Mike Tyson's name was big. I was hoping to get a Mike Tyson fight, and it, and it never happened. So, so I, I remember going out and to, uh, to, to dinner after a fight, which took place at the Aladdin Hotel with, with, uh, with some of my uh, official friends. And, and back then, I was still a bit bitter and complaining as to why I wasn't getting any of the the, the big fights, and uh, uh, one of the judges that happened to to be there that night that there that night said to me, you know, Kenny, there is nothing we can do about uh, a fight assignments. The only thing for you to do is to just put it in the hands of the Lord. And 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 and, and as much as I should have responded to that, because that wasn't the first time I heard it. I had heard it many times. But I was just so driven to want to get that big, big uh, uh, super fight that it would just go in one ear and go right out the other. But when she said it, it was like, I got it. And from that point on, I didn't worry about the big fights anymore. I started focusing more in on my skills and what I needed to do so that when the call came, I was ready. 
And um, um, after that night, I left it alone. Uh, but there were other struggles that came along. And the other struggles that I am uh, referring to was, I did a fight at the, at the Orleans Hotel. It was, uh, we call them uh, little club fights. And um, the fight that I did, um, fighter A hit fighter B, and fighter B went down so hard that when his back hit the canvas, his head hit the canvas as well. And I didn't even count. I knew this guy was seriously hurt. And the doctors got in and did medically what they could do and rushed him to the hospital. Well, ultimately what happened was the fighter had experienced a cerebral hematoma. Um, there was bleeding of the brain. They did surgery on the fighter um, to stop the bleeding. And when they stitched and, and sewed him back up, the bleeding started again and he passed away. At that particular time, emotionally, it broke me down. I didn't know if I wanted to continue refereeing. I was devastated that a fighter had passed. But in our sport, those things happen. Um, um, the blessing that I got was that my fellow colleagues were calling me up and, and, and I needed it. Um, the executive director, Mark Ratner, called me up to console me like the other officials. But Mark Ratner also said to me, Kenny, be prepared because of the next fight card, you're going to work it. And I knew at that point I had to get it together. And I knew I had to get it together because I was going to be under the microscope now. They were going to see how well I'm able to handle what had happened in the ring to me. So um, everything worked out. Um, I thank the Lord again because my work um, was good that night that the Mark Ratner and the commissioners didn't think that that would be a, 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 a problem for me in the future, in future fights. So I had gotten that one behind me. Then the next thing that, 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 that came along that was another challenge for me was when I got diagnosed with, with cancer. And um, it was kind of like another blow. But this blow was like a knockout blow. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. At, at that time, after the doctor, after I got the call of, that I had cancer, I didn't know, I mean, you're talking about living or dying now. You don't know what the outcome's going to be. Um, so, uh, again, I had to call on the Lord. I had to put my faith and my trust in Him. Um, uh, my wife is a, a wellness coach and health educator. And my wife kept saying to me, you're going to beat it. You're going to beat it. And at that point, I changed my diet. Um, I started eating a more healthier diet. And um, I had gotten a, a, a naturopath doctor, and I was doing, doing things um, with him. And uh, um, I did not tell Mark Ratner or any official up till then that I had, had been diagnosed with cancer because ultimately what I wanted to do was, was beat it. Uh, my, my doctor was sending me uh, registered letters telling me that if I didn't come in and get this problem taken care of, that I could die. And um, I went 10 months without contacting my doctor, um, just basically eating healthier. And when I went back and saw my general practitioner and he tested me, my, my, uh, you know, you go in and you get blood work and they test it and 
and everything was looking better. He sent me to uh, uh, another specialist, and the specialist did his test on me, and he said, he said, Kenny, your body is healthier, um, but the cancer is still there. Um, and the uh, cancer was in my prostate. So um, at that point in time, I decided to just have my prostate removed. Because if the cancer gets outside of the prostate, it can attack, it can, it can attack the lymph nodes and spread. Um, and emotionally, I just wanted it out. So I had the surgery. Um, uh, after the surgery, the doctor uh, announced to me that that though my prostate was cancerous, my prostate was healthy, which was a good thing because then the cancer could not spread, which taught me something. Cancer will spread in an unhealthy environment, but because I was eating healthy, it it did not spread. It, it kept it inside the, 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 the cancer wall. So, so anyway, um, I had some rehab to go through. Uh, I was, uh, I, I thank Robert Bird, one of my fellow referees, because he took me to the gym. I started working out in the ring to, to, to get my movement, my timing back. And, um, and, I, and I'm glad I did because four months after my surgery, I had my surgery in May and in September, I got the call to referee the Oscar De La Hoya Bernard Hopkins fight. And, um, and I, I thank Mark Ratner uh, for that assignment because the media was kind of attacking him because they felt that they should have gave that fight to another referee as opposed to me. And uh, I remember Mark Ratner uh, being interviewed by one of the uh, sports announcers that it's Kenny Bayless's time and he'll do well. It's basically what Mark's response was to them. And, uh, and in that fight, I did a, a, a great job. And from that fight, um, my status, you know, went to another level. And for the last 10 years, I've done some of the major uh, top fights in Las Vegas, fights like uh, Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya. Um, and at the time I did that fight, that was the highest grossing fight in boxing history. And then um, last year, I did Mayweather uh, Canelo Alvarez, and that became the highest boxing uh, uh, match in boxing history. But but uh, Manny Pacquiao against Sugar Shane Mosley, Ricky Hatton, um, Juan Manuel Marquez, I've done all those fights. Mayweather, when he fought uh, Shane Mosley, as uh, um, so I've done a lot of major fights over the years, and I'm just truly blessed and, and thankful. And I guess the icing on the cake for me is just uh, this past Saturday being, being inducted into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. Um, with, with all I've been through in my career, um, and then to get the major fights that I've gotten, and then getting inducted into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame is just, I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for it. Um, 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 I, I go in as the first active um, uh, official into the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, and, and I'm just truly thankful and, 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 and blessed uh, for it. Um, people have asked me, uh, how many more years I got left as a referee, and I, I can't even answer it. As long as my health is there and I'm making the right call and the right decision, then I'll be there. When, when, when any of those things uh, 
don't meet my satisfaction, then I guess that will be the time that I'll retire. But as of now, I, 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 I feel that um, uh, everything is good. I'm still going strong. And, and we'll just uh, make that decision when I cross that bridge. But um, I want to thank John for this opportunity to, to speak with you. And, and I just want to say God bless and good night.